pardon me, but when she said she loves me and I was all she needed, I didn't hear that. All I heard was what she said. I cheated on you. China spoke softly, sinking her head down, looking into her own lap. I had an affair. Now I know they say it's all in perception, on how you look at it, but from the outside looking in, it's easy to get the notion the two had everything going for them, Jason, China. They had been high school sweethearts since day one and loved since the 10th grade. What an ideal marriage to be, man, woman, enough to make the rest of the world jealous. To think the girl you love so much, plan to marry, spend the rest of your life with, turn around and do this. Her apologies sound faded. I felt like she was deliberately burning me, then got angry for saying ouch. I found myself wondering, wondering if we should have split up or not. Looking back on it, she'd soon say well into the relationship, words like, I wonder what it'd be like to step out on him. Speaking out of character, of course, in an intense argument, with our little fights, squabbles. Sometimes I felt like her big brother, or even if we were just best friends. I mean, what's wrong with being that close to someone? When we'd come home from work, dinner was already prepared. Saturdays, she'd send me to the store. I'd come back with a cup of coffee in my hand, and on rare occasions, surprising her with a blood deep red rose in my hand saying, I love you, China. I mean, I did. In the morning, after we'd kiss to wake each other, her breath smelled like crisp, fresh spring water. Like she come home from work sometimes looking wonderful in her nylon silk stockings and her cotton white blouse. I wanted to just touch her because I loved her and she loved me. Evidently she didn't though. Or else why would she do what she just did? Maybe that's what blinded me. I quickly was intoxicated with her. But don't get me wrong. It wasn't like that all the time. I mean, the mere thought of her sends chills up my spine. Cause like the change from winter to spring, she turned on me. I couldn't have been no longer than a few weeks ago. She talking to her so-called best friend, hadn't seen in a while. Hmm, I suppose. doing something about this right now wouldn't matter. If I went on my gut instinct and killed him, her, and myself, well, you can see where that's gotten us now. But only if she had told me something. I mean, earlier, what was on her mind? If anything, what was wrong? Instead of those stupid signs. I mean, come on, we're not reals, are we? If there was anything going on, bothering her. Why couldn't she tell me? In an intense argument, China shouted out, yelling. I tried telling you, but you never listen. You're always out doing your own thing, having fun. You never pay attention to me. Never, never. Pay attention to you? I said back. Almost, always, home. I am. I'm never gone. Listen to you. I lied back in a suggestive sway, speaking in a sarcastic but angry tone. Where do you expect me to be? With you everywhere? In your dreams? In your room? Your thoughts? Your tampons? She could have chuckled when I said that because she knew that I didn't even know what I was saying. We tossed words around till she said those five words I hate. 
You never read the signs. Signs, signs. I started to shout. See, by now, I just about had it. With both arms elevated to my head, pinching my temples. With the plain, with the palm of my hands in my hand, what makes us different from the other animals is humans have this ability to make decisions. And maybe that's what stuttering, as I was bringing my point across, people have this developed this crazy ability to lie because I was so angry. Why didn't you say anything to me? Something facing the floor, the bedroom. Cocking back the 38 revolver, mumbling beneath my breath, men don't listen. Please, that's just a cop out, you know it. The lower part of China's face sank, extending from her jaw. As upset as I was, panting on like a starving street cat, I doubt she was afraid, but she felt embarrassed. Get creative, I said or just tell the truth, admit it. I lift the barrel of my gun, pointed it over at the both of them, looked over at her so-called friend Simon, who was shooken up as well. You saw him, you saw someone else, you wanted to be with him. You liked Simon, you wanted to be with him. Why was that so hard to tell? Look, look, you're with him now. China's eyes rolled towards the window. You could hear whistling down the street as the police cars sound suddenly crawled up the road, getting closer and closer to my apartment. The radio in the room was playing one of those old 70s love songs. I think you got it all set up by any pebbles. Simon quickly attempted to make a run for it. Get back over here, I aggressively yelled after firing off a warning shot. Let him know I meant business. Where the hell do you think you're going? I didn't, he didn't answer. China began to cry. Stop, Jason, stop. Now I'm in business, thinking to myself, while reaching for the pack of cigarettes on the top dresser drawer, listening to China chant on about, no, Jason, stop, stop. Taking a few puffs of my cigarette, I lift the gun, pointed it at Simon, and said, funny the power these things give off. Speaking of the 38 in my hand, I looked at China, then thought, as much as I wanted to, extend my arms out to her, open my heart again, saying, it'll be okay, baby, come back home. I forgive you, I couldn't, because she sounded pathetic. Besides, after pulling a stunt like that, I felt she was, never wanted me from the start. And the whole 10 years, we were together. I never, never thought. Finally, if I ever did anything to her, carefully thinking, well, I could see it if I hit her, ripped her off, or jeopardized her livelihood. But no, we were joint at the hips. At least I thought we were. How arrogant she was so in my face with it, like I was one of her girlfriends showing her new boyfriend off or something. You could have been a little more discreet about it. It wasn't like long until I realized I was going to pop. Till I'd about had it, I even tried cutting her off completely. I didn't know if it was my curiosity or my pure addiction for her, but I had to see for myself. Her friends 
would call looking for China. I'd either hang up the phone or act as if she weren't home, saying it was the wrong number and just keep it off the hook maybe. They would get the message thinking. One of the negotiators while screaming up the staircase shouted through his bullhorn, okay, Jason, let the hostages go. That shot I fired off like 20 minutes ago must have gotten their attention. I work hard every day to keep this house up, feed her, make her happy. And this is the thanks I get? Look, look at, look out there. They're pointing towards the window. They're treating me like I'm the bad guy, but no one knows or more or less cares what you've done to me, my feelings. And to think I thought I knew you. What possessed you to display this personality? I asked, not really expecting an answer, but just trying to get a point across. Like it would make a difference anyway. China looked so ugly to me now, replaying in my mind the lies she told, the games she played, mocking me, making a fool of my love. Judging my her actions, she was getting a big kick out of it though. Here I am ready to settle down with her, perhaps have kids, who knows? It seems like just yesterday when she crawled into my arms, wanting to be with me. I'll admit, I had questions though. Second thoughts, but honestly, I mean, who wouldn't? China was beautiful. Now look, look at her. This drives me crazy. She drives me crazy. When I first met her, she drove me wild. Now, I'm nearly insane. I could remember the night I caught her. The sight of what I was about to see irked me, made me Earl. Earlier, that, or earlier at work, I couldn't have sworn I felt something bitter cooking up in the pit of my gut. I knew it was bound to happen sooner or later. Listening to her cries, chant in ecstasy, infuriated me. Knowing it wasn't me making her feel this way, sat in my heart. The lies she told. He's only going to be here just to get himself together. Coercing me to allow this to be. Now, Two weeks ago, before this mess started, China insists this is our place, I said to her. I shouted, mine and yours. His well-being is his business, not ours. Understand that? I never came in. She just moved Simon in our apartment, whether I said yes or no. I couldn't sleep those first few nights. The distance between China and I grew further and further apart. Imagine the absence of the love of your life, which causes sleep deprivation. My work performance declined. Coworkers asked questions. I just pushed it off though, like nothing was the matter. Until one afternoon, an employee cooked up enough nerve to go for the gusto. Are you and China still together? Uh, yes, nervously I answered. I couldn't say a word though. Later that day, while standing at the elevator, waiting, I swore I overheard them talking. China's got a new boyfriend. No, the woman said to the other. Ooh, what? What did you find that out? She also said, I don't know, the woman replied, but she was kissing some other guy. What? 
Then the elevator door opened. One of them looked back at me, staring at me. It felt like China had ripped my heart out of my chest. When I confronted her with the news, she even had the audacity to come back at me with, no, come on, Jason, you know I'd never cheat on you. I snapped. And to hear her say, how could you think something like that was going on? We'd been together for years. Don't you trust me, Jason? Hmm. Don't you trust me? Don't be silly. I was right through. I saw right through the deceptive actions, though. Nervous in bed, answering questions quickly. And oh, let's not forget those constant headaches she's always complaining about. It's so sickening. And such a sad fact that love never works together. One person always loves the other one more. The very day, the very first day I saw her, I knew this was what men spent their lives chasing. Very few got it. And I was lucky, that's right, lucky enough to have gotten as far as I did. She even questioned my confidence for calling me a bashful coward for not approaching her sooner. I just laughed it off because I knew. And looking back on it, I can say this much about the feelings I had for her, for China, was very dangerous. It was 10.30 that night. We may have all still been alive if I hadn't seen what I was seeing. Simon and she tangled up in my sheets. As the SWAT team rushed up the stairs, after hearing that last shot burst off, one officer ran over to the apartment door and as soon as he was about to give a swift kick to open, pop, Jason swallowed his own bullet, dropping the 38 revolver to the ground. Eight police officers stormed in the apartment at once, only to find the bodies lying dead still. There were two in the bedposts and blood. Then, at the foot of the bedpost, I lied. My mouth stretched open wide, blood oozing out of my ears. The light gray carpet, I watched myself lying there, unable to move, angry, and listening to those songs on the radio, playing over and over again. I think you got it all set up. I think you got perfect plans by Annie Pebbles.